not in frame. Can't see the table. Oh no. Oh no, no. It's too, too tall. Oh, oh. Lights in the frame. Framing looks good, perfect, I just need. What truly really makes this game innovative is- Hey Chris, can I, what are you doing? Nothing! Hey everybody, welcome out to another Dice Tower Rapid Fire Roundup. I'm your host, Chris Yee, and today, I'm going to be taking you on a journey through 10 games. 10 games that I've played that uh, I'm not going to be doing full reviews of. Maybe someone else already has or will. But uh, these are games that I wanted to talk about that I've been playing uh, recently here. And I'm going to be talking about them from in, in order. From my least favorite one to my most favorite. In fact, my most favorite is an expansion. That's a little tease for about 8 minutes from now. Uh, let's start with a game that I guess had impressed me the least. It was called Gargoyles Awakening. This game could have hit the snooze button. It needed a little more time. Get its beauty sleep. <sighs> well, I, I shouldn't say that because the game is gorgeous. It's really well, uh, you know, on the production side of things, really well made. Except for that, the fact that the cardboard construct buildings don't fit back into the box made. <sighs> anyway, the, the thing with this game is that it's a very simple game, right? You have characters, it's a tactical, move around and then punch things, roll dice to punch things. There's some good little tactical cards in there, <clears throat> and I think that those are some really smart systems that they have, but they're just not that exciting. The problem is that the theme is not, the theme's almost carried through, but there's things that are anti antithetical to the theme of gargoyles. You know, for example, buildings are of different heights. I thought, oh, I know the show. I started rewatching it recently on Disney Plus. Recommend that you do, because it's a good show. The gargoyles glide. They can glide from a higher building to a lower building. Oh, that sounds great. Is that what the mechanism is? No. Glide is basically the same thing as move, and any building costs two movement points to move up, whether it's the one-story bank or the 38-story skyscraper. Well, that's disappointing. So some of the rules just kind of get in the way of itself, and, and it, it's, it's disappointing. The Gargoyles Awakening is okay, but I've got some issues with it. <sighs> All right, now let's move on to some good games here. Uh, I'm going to start with a twofer of Phil Walker Harding games. There's Neoville, published by Blue Orange Games, and then Llama Land, published by Lookout Spiel. Why am I talking about these two games together? Uh, well, one, they're both published by Phil Walker Harding, Phil Walker Harding, but two, they both, to me, are fun and solid and good, but they lack a little bit of originality because they seem kind of based on previous games that Phil Walker Harding released through those same publishers. Uh, 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 Neoville is published by Blue Orange, who did Cloud City. Cloud City and Neoville are both tile laying games where you're building your own city and you lay out tiles with four little, you know, uh, four little squares on them of different terrain types. I think the Cloud City gimmick of building bridges between the skyscrapers is a little bit better. I like Neoville, but it's not uh, amazing enough to kind of stand out. And then Llama Land is very similar to Baron Park and his other game, Gingerbread House, both published by Lookout Spiel. And the two of them are kind of mushed together and become this Llama Land game. And I like Llama Land a lot. I, 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 think, it's a, I think it's a very, very solid game but it feels a lot like Baron Park and it feels a lot like Gingerbread House. And I think that's a little bit too bad that, you know, for me, who I own both of those previous games, this one is, is good, but it's not original enough to own. But if you don't own either of the other two, you could buy any of those three games, maybe even buy two of the three games, and I think that you'd have a lot of fun, but I almost, almost don't see a need to own all three. But anyway, many, many designers just kind of rehash their own game designs and republish them. So I'm not going to hold that too hard against them, but that's something I noticed here. Let's go on to the next game. Another good game, Bad Company. Bad Company is a game that falls in the genre of uh, one player, the lead player at the time, rolls a set of dice, and then you make some numbers of the dice, and everybody gets to activate production based on those numbers. And so you can kind of customize, hey, my number four is going to give me these types of resources. My number five is going to give me these types of resources, right? That's a thing we've seen in a lot of different uh, games, Start, kind of starting with Settlers of Catan, Machi Koro, Space Space, those type of games. This is kind of one of those, but it's got a really fun theme. I like this crime gang kind of theme to it. 
And uh, I like the resources. I like the way that they all come together. You, you, there's a little track where you run away from the cops. And, you know, it's neat. There's a little bit more going on in a good way. And I think there's a little bit more control. And I think that there's fewer opportunities for you to get hosed with a bad roll where you say, well, that does nothing for me. I feel like this one's one of the more solid games of this genre. I quite like it, so that's bad company. Let's go on to another good game, Mobile Markets. This is by, uh, this is by Ivan Lashin, who did... Uh, who did uh, uh, Smartphone Inc. Smartphone Inc. Is, is the original game. This is kind of like a, a card-based game, a card game that seems based on, on Smartphone Inc. Same theme, same design house and everything, same publisher. I like this one quite a bit. I think it does stand out as a little bit more unique uh, to its predecessor than some of the other games I talked about today. Uh, the thing about this one, I feel like, is it, it takes a little bit longer than I want it to. I'm not sure that it's even shorter than Smartphone Inc., but I think it does play really well at the lower player counts. I particularly like it at two. I think it's really good there. Uh, and I, I like the way that you deal with customers and you're trying to meet their demands. You build up a very satisfying kind of you know, a series of upgrades and ways to customize your phones to sell to the market. I almost feel like the game goes one round too long. At the end of four rounds, I say, woof, I've scraped and I've scrapped and I've made my mobile phone empire. Oh, there's one more round? Like, I thought that this kind of feels good right here. So, I don't know, I, I think that, for that reason, it kind of holds it back from being a great game, but I think that mobile, uh, mobile markets is, in fact, quite a good game. Moving on, here's another good game right here, Rift Force. Rift Force is a card game. It's a two-player head-to-head card game of, of elemental magicians kind of dueling it out. But it's played in, in a little line, right? Uh, there's five areas in the middle, and you're playing cards out to it. It almost feels like a Lost Cities or like a Battle Line kind of a game, but with direct attacking and stuff. And it's a really smart system. You can play cards out to the grid, or you can discard a card to activate ones that are already out there. I like it. I like that you are trying to... Uh, or you can score points. If you score points for empty areas where only you have troops, your mages, and the other side doesn't, and you also get points for destroying the other side's elemental mages. I think that's really smart. It's it's always progressing towards the end game in a really satisfying way. This is a type of a genre of game that I don't always like, the dueling card game. But this one, I think, stands out as, as quite good. So, Rift Force. Uh, next up is... World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King. This is in the Pandemic system. This is a game that I, I think is really solid. I don't like it as much as the original Pandemic because in this game the strategy is a little bit more obvious, forward-facing, you know what to do. Go fight bad guys and then complete three quests, then kill the Lich King. I think thematically it's really great. I don't even know the World of Warcraft theme that well, but I get it. I know what's going on. Fantasy world, go slay some monsters, complete some quests. Great. Uh, I think that it's it's more straightforward too. So that this might make a good, this might make a better like gift to people or a uh, kind of an introductory type of game because the strategy is more readily apparent even compared to base game pandemic. There's no moments of let's go meet in this kind of obscure city over here so I can share a card with you so that hopefully you draw the fifth yellow card to be able to cure the disease. I'm going to build a research station to set up you in the future, right? I love those strategies in Pandemic. It's not really here. This one's a little bit more uh, apparent what to do, but not in a bad way, just in a different audience kind of way. So for that reason, I think it's good, not great. Now let's get into some really great games. Rolling Realms is a roll and write game. It's been a while since I've played a roll and write that I said, this is great. This game is growing on me. It, there's basically... It's by Stonemeyer Games, and the idea of Rolling Realms is that it's based on the other Stonemeyer games. This was originally a free print-and-play game that I think there was enough kind of interest by people and, and kind of demand that Stonemeyer decided to actually publish a boxed version of it. They did a pretty alright version. I wish that this was themed differently, but I also understand that this was basically a free thing that he was giving away and said, okay. I'll fit this into my production schedule. I would rather this had just been like Charterstone, the board, the dice game or something, but 
you know, and, and gotten some nice, neat art. But I get it. There's allusions to other Stonemaier games, and I've played most of them. I've played almost every other Stonemaier game, apparently. I didn't realize that until playing this one. Because you set out three little mini-games at a time. Viticulture, and Charterstone, and uh, Tapestry, right? Boom, I set these three out in front of me. And then you play a little roll-and-write game. Nine rounds of rolling dice and running numbers, and combos, and resources, and, and, and adjusting dice. All those good trappings of a solid game. Then you play the second act, and you randomize three more games to come out. Oh, cool, between two cities, yada, 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 right? And so these, the fact that you are playing three mini-games that have small little interactions, and you randomize which three come out, it's a really smart system. It's really smart, I like it. It plays well solo, it plays well multiplayer and everything. This one's kind of growing on me, I have to admit. Next up, Seven Wonders Architects. This is a very lightweight game, very family weight game. This is one that we have been playing a lot with my six-year-old kiddo. She really likes it because the choices are not too hard. It has the nice civilization theme to it, right? But it's not, it's not, uh, it's not too thick on there. You either draw a card from the middle of the table or a card from the decks on either side of you. And so it, ha it retains that idea of Seven Wonders where you and your neighbors have a little bit of interaction points. Is the game straightforward? Is the game almost obvious at times? Yes. But I think that it's a really fun game for how simple and, and, and you know, for how many choices you really are going to make on your turn. I think that it's a good, really good family weight game. Am I going to pull this out with my core game group? Not necessarily, but I think this game has a place. This game definitely has a place for me. I think it's great. Last up, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the Dune Imperium Rise of Ix expansion. I am really digging this game. I've, I've enjoyed Dune Imperium in general, and this expansion, I feel like, definitely makes the game better. It's a bit pricey. That's my biggest concern. But I like the new space that adds out onto the board. You put an overlay, you lay this little piece of cardboard on top, you change up some of the yellow and the green spaces, and they become much more interesting and really cool. I love the track that you have the, te the, the tense choice of do I keep moving up it, or do I use that action to uh, retract all the way back to the bottom but get every benefit that I've crossed. The track's only three spaces long, but every time that you move up, it's so exciting. Oh, I'm gonna get that, it's gonna be great. I like the Dreadnoughts, I like the new little th cards and stuff that it adds, but the, the new spaces are really great, and the technology, I love getting permanent technology that makes me more asymmetric from everyone else as the game goes on. So much better uses, I think, for, uh, for the amount of space that's out there. I, I think I pretty much just always want to play with this expansion now. <sighs> Not sure if I can... If, I don't, I'm not sure if I will teach with it, that's the big thing. But if I'm playing with other people who have played Dune already, then I'm going to teach this expansion, because you should try it. I like it that much. So that's the game that I'm most hyped about. So anyway, that's my rapid-fire thoughts on the, the last uh, month or two here, games that I've played. Like I said, these have been reviewed or will be reviewed by other people. Uh, if, if you want to go check those out, make sure to watch those full videos. This is just tasters, snippets of my thoughts on those. So anyway, my name is Chris Yee from the Dice Tower. Have yourselves a great day.